Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George, and today we're going to be talking about how we actually don't quote unquote experience free will. Okay, I want to first start out, you know, just by describing why, you know, I'm doing this show. Um, this, this myth, this, this um, illusion that we, we actually have the ability to choose our thoughts, um, choose our feelings, you know, just to decide what we want, has been prevalent, you know, at least um, from the beginning of civilization. We tend to hold ourselves responsible and each other responsible for what we do. And uh, when we do that, you know, it causes harm, you know, because when we hold ourselves and each other responsible, then we say to ourselves, well, you know, if we've done something wrong, we deserve to be punished. So we punish ourselves and each other. Um, or, you know, yeah, in the case of ourselves, we'll, we'll, hold, we'll feel guilty, we'll feel the pain of guilt. So, um, and, you know, aside from that, it's just the idea that, like, you know, considering all the evidence, you know, all the evidence that, that demonstrates that we don't have a free will, um, for, for our whole entire civilization and society be, to be structured on this premise that we do, just is like, it's bewilderingly um, curious. It's just, it, it would seem like, basically what I'm saying is like, the, the purpose of the show is that I, I believe, you know, I predict that we can create a better world, a more compassionate and understanding world through transcending this l illusion. Okay. Um, now, these shows are, are going to be um, online. If, if, if you don't catch them on, on cable TV, they'll be on the website called um, causalconsciousness.com. Okay? Um, now, like, all right, and again, before, before we start out with, well, you know, because the, the, the most fundamental reason people say that they have a free will, you know, when, when you ask them is they, you know, is they, they say that, of course I have a free will, I experience it. You know, every thought that I make, it's up to me. You know, but as we'll see, we'll, we'll see that that actually isn't the case. You know, it's not a free will. But before we go into that, I just want to describe, uh, define um, what people mean when they say that they have a free will. Okay, so free will means that basically we can decide whatever we want regardless of our basic character, you know, our personality, who we are as a person, um, regardless of our unconscious, you know, what, what our unconscious happens to be doing, regardless of what we've learned in the past or what we haven't learned, regardless of our genetic makeup, um, regardless of so many of these things that actually, when you think about it, combine to compel our every thought, action, feeling, you know, and this, this doesn't apply just to human beings. This is applies to the entirety of, of the universe. Um, and so, like, the, the reality is that we human beings have causal wills. You know, uh, we have a will, means that we make decisions, but this will is caused, you know, our decisions are caused by factors. And, you know, we've gone over this in, in other shows, this, the idea that causality means cause and effect. It means that, um, that everything that happens, including every thought, feeling, and action that we do, has a cause. And then that cause has a cause, you know, because everything must have a cause. You can't have things going on in the universe that are not caused. Okay, so, um, so basically that's what we mean. We mean. That's, you know, it's the idea that... Um, we actually, the universe is causal, so our human will must be causal. All right, so let's, let's start. So the, the idea is the, the most fundamental defense for free will when you talk to people and philosophers, etc., is that it's so natural to us. You know, of course we have a free will. You know, I experience. You know, people say, I experience my, my will is free. But that's not the case. People don't experience their, um, their wills as free. Now, I want to kind of like 
there are some things we experience that, that are actually, well, like for example, we, we experience the world as flat. Okay, we, you know, we walk around and you know, it's not, uh, we don't experience the, uh, the um, our, our, you know, our, our world as, as an orb, which it is, you know. The experience is the world is flat and fine. That, um, that's kind of an illusion that we've understood for, for millennia or at least hundreds of years. Um, but that, that illusion doesn't really, it doesn't make much of a difference, you know, um, unless we want to travel to the moon and back or, you know, send a, a, um, a spaceship into the atmosphere, out of the atmosphere, and then return. You know, really, um, that kind of illusion, it doesn't impact our everyday lives, but the illusion of free will impacts it incredibly. So, so the idea is like, now, when people say they experience a, f a free will, what they really, really mean is they experience a will. And I want to dis dis distinguish the two. Um, the will, the definition of will is that um, it's like volition. It's like the will is like the, the act of choosing, the act of deciding. Okay, so we decide all the time. You know, I decided to do this show. You're decided, you've decided to watch it. Um, we decide what to eat and all. So that's not, but that's not the, um, what people claim. People claim that these decisions are free of the causal past, free of how their parents raised them, free of their desires, you know, free of, of um, for example, if, if they're uh, given a choice between an apple and a corn muffin, you know, um, their choice is going to be based to a you know, to a great extent on which they prefer, which tastes better to them. And we don't, we don't get to choose, you know, our tastes. We don't get to choose our desires. I mean, there's many ways of describing, you know, the different factors that, that make free will impossible. But certainly um, taste, you know, our, our, our preferences for different foods is one. So, so the idea is like when people say that they experience a free will, it's not, it doesn't jive with their actual experience. Um, what, what, the, what they really mean is that they're experiencing the will, that they're experiencing that they do have a will. And I wanna, I wanna get into how, how people came to, um, to make this kind of mistake in, in, their, um, <coughs> in their considerations, in their evaluation of, of human will. Um, and you know, we can only speculate on this, but for example, in history, um, there was St. Paul who wrote in Romans um, a statement to the effect that, well, you know, I, I want to do good. You know, I want to do um, good uh, as much as I can, but sometimes I find that I can't. Okay, so St. Paul actually is, um, is describing what, what this show is about. You know, just that, like, if we had a free will, then um, every act would be up to us. Every decision would be up to us, every moral decision. So if St. Paul wanted to be completely good, never make a moral mistake, if he had a free will, he could. But he realizes that, um, that he can't. So he, he kind of like brings up the, the whole issue of will in Christianity. And it's not until I think about 500 AD when St. Augustine is grappling with the question of, of evil, you know, of um, just uh, punishment and, and, and just blame and all. And like, he, he kind of like says to himself, well, wait a minute, you know, if God is all good, um, then we can't blame God. So like, if we do something wrong, it must be our fault. And actually, this is kind of interesting, because I was doing some research last night on, um, good and evil, you know, it, within the Judeo-Christian context. And actually in Isaiah, there's a statement that God says that, you know, I create everything. I create both good and evil. So, you know, the, 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 um, the conception that God is all good and didn't create evil is, is an, I guess, an interpretation of, of the Bible that, um, that I don't think, I'm not sure um, in Judaism it's held that way. In Christianity, is in Islam perhaps. But anyway, that's how that's how um, the term free will came to be. Um, 
St. Augustine wrote a book called um, De Libro Arbitrio or something like that, which is translated um, as, you know, on free will, okay? He coined the term free will. Before that, you know, um, I don't know, people didn't think about it. I, I think they did hold them to each other responsible, so, so I think they, they kind of inferred that we do, do have a free will, but... Um, but it just, there wasn't a term for it. There wasn't a, a kind of a doctrine, you know. And, and it actually, the whole question had been um, addressed by the Greeks, you know, Lysippus, um, in um, I think the fifth century BC, he wrote the first statement on, on the, the fact that our, our wills are, are determined, predetermined, or causal. He, he said that, like, you know, nothing happens at random and everything for a reason. Which, you know, if everything happens for a reason, then that, that of course, makes free will impossible. All right, so, so you've got St. Augustine saying that, well, you know, when, when we do what we do, it's completely up to us, you know, because God granted us free will. And that, you know, when you think about it, from a theological standpoint, there's a, there's a contradiction. Because on the one hand, the teaching is that God is all-powerful that nothing happens without God wanting it to happen. On the other hand, you have um, the statement, well, sure, God is, you know, God is all-powerful and whatever he says goes, but he granted human beings a free will. And, as, you know, there's, there's an inconsistent logic there. It's incoherent. Um, kind of like, and, you know, the whole concept of, like, of an, um, an all-powerful God is somewhat incoherent. When you think of... Um, there's a question, there's a question that goes like, well, if God is all-powerful, can he create a boulder, a rock, so large that even he can't lift it? <laughs> if you think about that, you will very quickly realize that uh, the, 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 the idea of an all-powerful God um, seems incoherent. Um, for example, you might ask yourself, well, can God um, cease existing? Can he just, like, stop being God? I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think so. But anyway, so what happens is that um, because St. Augustine um, came up with this, his solution to, to evil, you know, I, which is curious, all right, because, like, you know, in the, we're taught, um, Judaism, Christianity, other religions, I suppose, that when things go well, we should thank God. You know, it's like, if something, something goes rightly, it's God's doing, and we should feel grateful. You know, we shouldn't, you know, it's not that we, we did anything. It, it's God's doing. But when things go wrong, it's our fault. <laughs> okay, so, so, you know, and that was the basic teaching. And so naturally you can see how, especially within Christianity, much a bit less so in Judaism, but, you know, the basic teaching is that, well, you know, we have these doctrines, we have these beliefs that... Um, that, you know, that if, if you believe a certain thing, then your prospect, your likelihood of spending eternity in heaven is much greater than if you believe something else. Like, for example, if you don't believe that um, there is a God, then, you know, that puts you at risk. 